All right, this is going to be a short, straight through video. We've got a bad breaker in here. So when I was re working on replacing the breaker, this item here got stripped. So whoever tightened it up went well beyond the specs that they were supposed to, and they didn't actually tighten this up correctly. What they did is they over tightened it, they stripped it out, it won't open. So I had to cut the wire off and put in a different breaker. But the breaker I put in it was a 1520 instead of a 1515. And the wire that is connected to this breaker is not rated for 20 amps. Since the breaker is designed to protect the wire, I am going to replace it with another with a new 1515 and put it in and make sure that it's tightened correctly. Note, on most breakers, they take a square bit, not uh, a Phillips head, as it, it was, some people would think that it is. So with a square bit, it's very difficult to strip these out, and you can make sure that they're nice and tight, and you can use a, 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 a confidence that, that you've got it right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pop this off. I've already taken the, turned the power off, but we're going to pop this off. We're going to put a meter on it to make sure that there's no power in this breaker box. Then we're going to pull this breaker out and replace it with a new breaker. And we're just going to record this one straight through so that you see every step of what I'm doing. This is on an RV fifth wheel. and This is a 50 amp split phase breaker box, as you can see with the 50 amps here in the center. Mm, I don't know why that's holding on so tight. Oh, there it goes. Okay. He's got a little clips on the top I didn't notice. All right. So we take that. As you can see here, uh, this is where it's running, and this is from when I installed these two um, um, Shelly uh, MP modules to do meter tracking. So what we're going to do is... We're going to find the meter. Sorry, I had the meter sitting over on the other side of the room. I had to go over and get it. So, I'm going to turn this on real quick. Just do a quick check. Make sure I don't have any power in here. Power from this side is non-existent. Power from this side is non-existent. Um, I should have power from the DC side. I did not connect the DC side. So we'll run that over there, and oh, let's try it this way. And yeah, okay. All right, so everything's good. We're gonna flip this breaker off just to be sure. We're gonna flip this one off just to be sure. We are going to loosen, and I'm gonna do one more check on this just to make sure that I have what I need here. I'm going to, I, I'm a little bit paranoid about electricity, so when in, when in doubt, I like to double check everything to make sure that I don't have anything live. Now, I happen to know I have no electricity hooked up from the grid to this system, and I've got the inverter's main um, 6000 XP, I've got the main breaker shut off. So. There shouldn't be a single thing in here that's live, but that doesn't stop me from being a little bit nervous about it either way. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's take this. Let's take this breaker and let's loosen it. Loosen these two connections. Let me bend over here. This should be pretty quick and easy. Famous last words. Loosen that one. Loosen that one. Breaker should pop down. Both wires come right out. No big deal. I'm going to pull these out so I can reconnect them to the new breaker. New breaker's 1515. That's the old one. 1515. This is the new one. So we're going to take the new wire, put it in the first side of this breaker. And tighten it down. Now these are double breakers, which basically means it feeds two circuits off of a single breaker. And 
makes it real convenient where you can get a little a few extra circuits out of it. It does make it where you can sometimes pull more power out of the panel than the panel can support too. Uh, now in my case, I got a 6,000 XP, so I got 3,000 watts per leg. The left side of this breaker box has end to the right side of the breaker box. That's not 50 amps. So um, I'll bring in a torque screwdriver here in a little bit. Double check these, but make sure they're good and and tight. And then we'll just put it back there, snap it back in place, turn them off, push this back into place, and there we have it. Now, the one thing you need to do on items like this is double check that you have those breaker poles in there good and tight. I usually take a pair of electrical needle nose put it in there, try to pull these wires out, make sure those connections, if they're not good and tight, they can cause a lot of heat, cause a lot of damage. In your breaker box, start a fire, all kinds of bad things can happen. So you want to make sure you do that. Now, I'm going to stop you for just a minute, we we'll turn back on the power so we can do a meter back on it again, and then we'll put the covers back together. We'll call this circuit done. Be right back. All right. We're back. I turned back on the inverter. So now when I do this test for power here on this main circuit, I should show voltage in the 110 range on both legs here. And I've got 120.1 on that side. And I've got 120 even on that side. And across the two of them, I got 240. Now, in an RV, you typically don't use a 240. But in this case, uh, I don't have any circuits that, that do use it. So I'm going to flip back on the main RV. That should provide power to everything except the new circuits that we turned on here. I hear the uh, sound bar coming on over there. And now I'm going to turn back on those two metered circuits and that should get everything booting back up on my side, my computers and I'm going to put this back up there first and down there these are Phillips screws so we will tighten that one that one tighten that one and this last one here all right that was it replacing that breaker that had a bad connection on it wasn't a big deal it cost me I think uh, I think I ordered it for 12 bucks I don't remember if I got it off a of home Home Depot or if the wife ordered it off of Amazon um, I think I got it off of Amazon. I normally you pick these up at Home Depot, though. The prices are, are very, very competitive both directions. There's not much difference between the two. All right, that does it for today. Thanks for uh, watching. And oh, put the cover back on. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. It helps me continue to make videos. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.